Well, my review for this movie is certainly overdue. The Good Dinosaur is Pixar's second movie of 2015, right behind Inside Out, which I thought was fantastic. I bought it on Blu-ray the instant it came out, and I honestly didn't know what to expect out of this movie, because this is actually a rather divisive movie. I immediately knew going to Good Dinosaur that it was not going to be as good as Inside Out. But the reviews themselves were actually very divisive. Some liked it, some didn't, some thought it was okay, some loved it, some hated it. It was a very all over the place movie. So I was really intrigued to see what I would think of the movie myself until I finally got around to seeing it. And so now it's time for me to review the movie. So how do I feel about The Good Dinosaur? I honestly thought it was really, really good. I am pleasantly surprised with how good I personally feel this movie turned out. The Good Dinosaur asks the question, what if the meteorite that apparently hit Earth and supposedly wiped out all the dinosaurs maybe have missed Earth and so the dinosaurs kept on going on and living? And millions of years later, we are introduced to a family that gives birth to a new son named Arlo. A young dinosaur that is terrified of everything, and I mean everything. Eventually he accidentally falls into river rapids and he gets washed away and so now he has to find his way home. Along the way he finds a young toddler named Spot and together they need to work together for Arlo to get back home. While there are definitely a lot of aspects of the story I thought was rather original, there was also a lot of aspects of the film I thought were very familiar. Now, people keep on saying that the movie is a Pixar version of Disney's Dinosaur, but personally I've seen both films and I honestly don't get the connection because story and character wise I felt like the Disney's Dinosaur was very very different to Pixar's The Good Dinosaur. Seriously, why do people say that these are the same movie? They have almost nothing in common except for being animated movies about dinosaurs that are made by Disney. And in my honest opinion, I'd rather prefer The Good Dinosaur to Disney's Dinosaur. Aspects like the dinosaur befriending of a little tiny toddler and them trying to communicate even though one can talk and the other can't, and them trying to communicate with each other and other aspects of the story I thought were rather original. However, one part of the story I thought was rather familiar was the whole getting lost subplot, because, gee, I wonder if I've seen that from Pixar before. Okay, well let's see, well we have the original Toy Story, which was basically about Woody and Buzz getting lost out of Sid's house, and so they had to make their way back to Sid's house before he moves. Uh, Toy Story 2 is about Woody getting lost um, in Al's apartment and him making his way back to Andy's house. Toy Story 3 was about uh, the entire gang getting lost from Andy's house and them trying to make their way back. Finding Nemo was about Nemo getting lost from his family and him trying to get back. Even Inside Out had the same plot with Joy and Sadness getting lost out of headquarters and then trying to get back to HQ. Couldn't you have done something a bit more inventive with the story here, Pixar? I'm starting to see some sort of pattern. I swear, if Toy Story 4 is about our main characters getting lost and them trying to make their way back, I'm going to think that's hilarious. But I do like how this movie is solely trying to be its own thing rather than being a sequel or a remake or anything because I'm getting sick to death of these sequels. This is why I actually really appreciate Inside Out as well as The Good Dinosaur because this is not a sequel or a remake so I'm just going to enjoy this movie while it lasts because it is somewhat original material, just some story aspects just feel very familiar but it doesn't really bother me because I still got very invested with the characters. I love the way how Arlo was introduced in the movie. When he is introduced you're thinking, oh my goodness that is adorable. And I love how the movie actually starts off rather slowly because it builds up character development between Arlo and the rest of his family. And so they actually start building a relationship so when Arlo finally gets lost, it gives a reason for him to want to go back home. And honestly, I thought the character of Spot was so likeable and just so... well, likeable and interesting. He was like such an interesting character despite the fact he can't talk. He was such an engaging and very fascinating character and I actually preferred the character Spot to the character Boo from Monsters, Inc. And I really do love the relationship between Arlo and this kid, and I really love how they try to get this relationship to work, despite the fact that one can talk and the other one can't, and yet they manage to communicate extremely well. They have a really good chemistry. There was even a scene between the two that went, Oh my goodness, this is harsh. I wish I could cry in movies. It's pretty much impossible to make me cry in movies nowadays, so if the movie actually tugs my heart and I feel something inside, I think that would be enough because I got that feeling for Inside Out and I got that feeling again for The Good Dinosaur. It didn't make me cry, no, but 
no really really can these days but I really felt it in my heart and it's because it was just such excellent writing and it was also very visual I loved how they managed to sort of get this relationship between the two and there's very little dialogue and it was such an emotional moment for me that I may not have been crying from the eyes, but I almost think I may have been crying from the heart. Two Pixar movies in a row got me extremely close to making me cry. Keep it up, Pixar. If there's a scene like that in Finding Dory, I will be extremely impressed. But heck, I already am impressed. However, a couple of problems I do have with this movie is, for starters, the movie's second act. The second act of the movie, there's just something very iffy about it, and it kind of reminds me of my review of Mad Max Fury Road when I think about it, when I said that the second act sort of slowed down, then it picks back up in the third act. The Good Dinosaur did the same thing, only it just felt kind of iffy, and I don't really know why. Maybe it's got something to do with the T-Rexes or something, but there's just something about it that I'm really not too sure about. It starts off really strong in my opinion in the first act, and it gets there's something about it in the second act that I'm not too sure about. And then it picks back up in the third act. Another problem I do have, and the second act might have something to do with it, is that we get introduced to a villain that feels very shoehorned into it. Now I say that because there is a villain in the movie, but he's really only in the movie for like two or three scenes. And I felt like this character was only really shoehorned into the movie for the sake of having a climax at the end of the third act. This is something I complimented Inside Out for not doing. With all the stuff that's going on with Inside Out, with the getting lost of the headquarters and Riley starting to enter depression and all this stuff in Inside Out, I was really glad they didn't actually go ahead and add a villain into the Inside Out because having some sort of antagonist for the emotions to take down, it would have been too much for the movie to handle. It would have become overcrowded and kind of shoehorned in a way. And I'm actually really glad because apparently according earlier in development of Inside Out, there almost was an antagonist, but they sort of removed it because they didn't think it was necessary to the plot. However, the good dinosaur made this mistake, and the movie kind of suffers because of it. The villain feels very shallow, very one-dimensional. I feel like you could have just taken it out, and maybe come up with a more natural climax. There's another rather common complaint about the movie that only gets me sort of, and that is the animation in this movie. People say that the backgrounds for this movie look absolutely gorgeous, lots of very natural landscapes. And I agree, like, it looks photorealistic, it almost looks like you could have taken it with a camera. But then there's these really cartoony, abstract kind of animated characters like Arlo, the T-Rexes, and the Velociraptors, and all these other characters. And since these are rather cartoony, we've got a photorealistic background, a common complaint is that they don't really mesh, and just feels really out of place. And I agree with that complaint, but only to an extent. It didn't bother me with Arlo, because since Arlo was green, and the backgrounds are, for the most part, usually green, I actually felt like that he was able to blend in somewhat, and it didn't really bother me. How once the T-Rexes were introduced in the movie, yeah, it was really, really noticeable. It really starts to get a Who Framed Roger Rabbit look which I don't think was intentional. I can almost see behind the scenes of the people behind this movie arguing on whether they want to go with a more animated or more realistic look with the animation in this movie, and it suffers because of it. And honestly, if you ask me, I would rather a more animated look of a movie than a realistic look of a movie. Now, I will say that I'm really proud that Pixar can create uh, computed environments that look photorealistic. The fact that they can make something look very realistic out of nothing but computers, that is mind-blowing. But, I wouldn't want Pixar to continue in this direction. I just think that it should be Pixar to show, hey guys, look at how powerful our computers are. But, I really want animation companies, not just Pixar, but Disney, DreamWorks, and all these other animated companies, to focus on looking more abstract and more beautiful, because that's the point of animation. When you have animation, you can come up with some really cool imagery that you can't do with live action. Like, make characters' eyes go big, give them larger heads, give very interesting body designs. Really have fun with it. Inside Out knew about this, and it didn't actually focus on being realistic, and the movie focused more on being more cartoony and literally abstract. Which is why, ultimately, since everything's more cartoony and everything blends in together, which is why I honestly think that Inside Out is a better looking film. In fact, honestly, I honestly think that Inside Out is the best looking animated film I've ever seen. The movie is gorgeous, 
both of these movies are gorgeous. However, it feels like there was probably more bickering about the direction of the animation with The Good Dinosaur. And if that was the case, it wouldn't surprise me because I heard this movie had a lot of problems with development. So in other words, while there were a lot of problems in development, and it kind of does show, but really these complaints are not really that minor because I got very invested into the story, very invested into the characters, and I ultimately had a lot of fun. One other problem I give this movie though is that I do think that the movie could have done with some more laughs. Like it's an animated Pixar family movie. Because there are quite a few innuendos and there are a lot of jokes that your kids won't get but your teenagers and your adults will. But honestly, the complaints I gave this movie are very ignorable. Yeah, the movie could have been funnier but really it wasn't trying to be and I still enjoyed it. I still had a lot of fun with this movie. The animation looks iffy because it looks like people were arguing about it, but it still looks great. The villain was shoehorned and there's something unsure about the second act, but it's just something I'm not too sure about and I don't even know why the second act is so iffy to me, so maybe it's just me. I honestly think that this is a very fun movie. It's much better than Minions or Hotel Transylvania 2 or Home or any of those other anime movies that came out this year. Honestly, The Good Dinosaur is my second favourite animated film to come out in 2015 right behind Inside Out. And considering they're both by Pixar, I'm rather impressed. Would I recommend it? I'd say yeah, go ahead and check this movie out for yourself. Maybe you might like it, maybe you might not, because again, it's a very divided movie. But I personally thought there was a lot of enjoyment and a lot of fun to be had in it, and I really had a good time with this movie. In my Supersonic Corey channel, I did a video of my Pixar movies ranked videos. I did a part one and a part two. And if I was to put this movie in that ranking video, I would have put it between The Incredibles and Toy Story 2, which as you may know was pretty high. And that is my thoughts on The Good Dinosaur. I'm still trying to think of an ending catchphrase, so while I'm waiting for that, I'll just say, Hasta la vista, baby. I actually might go with that, actually. I think I found it.